Hey friends and family, hey loved ones. Hey, I wanted to share a few things about this last month, this last week, in the last couple days, but we'll just see. <laughs> we'll just see what wants to be shared and expressed. Ah. And so, yeah, I haven't really uh, expressed myself a whole lot the last couple weeks. I haven't been really creating, like, doing any painting or artwork or anything. or And I haven't really been writing a lot in my journal. And haven't been doing any videos either. So it's like, hmm. Yeah, um, kind of wondering, like, maybe it's like, it's okay, like, just to rest and let it all go for now. But I have been wondering, like, hmm, why am I not feeling drawn to those things that really do like nourish and feed me. But, um, yeah, just been focused on some other things too, like making some certain, some, some changes, um, dietary changes and, um, just changes in my routine and changes in my space and, yeah, cleaning up some things. And so I have, yeah, felt an aversion and, and noticed like certain strategies for avoidance. And yeah, that's, you know, I feel like I do have the answer and I already do know, but it's just a matter of being honest with myself and real with myself. And that was what I was wanting, like, like, where can I be more real with myself? And just asking others, you know, like, can you be more honest with yourself? You know, if you can't be more honest with me, can you be more honest with yourself? Or please get real with yourself. You know, please be honest with yourself. And so a lot of themes coming around, like, um, coming up around trust and truth. And like being able to move on or move forward from being stuck or feeling stuck and feeling so drained and so tired of being tired and all those things. And yeah, I've been paying attention to like the thoughts that I think or the thoughts that I pick up on, the thoughts that I become aware of and the things that I speak being mindful of my words and my intentions and what I want to create where I'm directing my attention and what I'm allowing for myself and what I'm willing to receive and what I'm willing to let go of or detach from or surrender and release. And so it's been a kind of a difficult, challenging last week and a lot of uh, feelings, unpleasant feelings, feelings that don't really feel very pleasing have uh, been coming up just to be moved, met, and released. And so one of the best reminders that I've received yeah, again, this week is just to make the room and make the space for it all to be and make the room for me, make the room for it all to be as it is and make the room and hold the space for it to change or for it to remain the same. I could just let go of it and let it do its thing. <laughs> yeah. And so sometimes like just making that room and making that space and not resisting what I'm feeling that just immediately just moves it and sometimes I just get to sit with it for a little while or just get to allow it to be there and also know that the other side of it already is as well and so valuing the whole and the whole experience and what the gifts 
that are being given. Noticing those gifts that are being given. Even if it's in hindsight. And blessing, thanking, and praising, and appreciating. All the things that help us embrace change or start to facilitate that change by making new choices for ourselves and just being willing to show up and take the next step. Knowing that you don't have to know what is changing. Just have that faith and know that that next step will appear and that next step and that next step. And so, um, yeah, the last video that I shared, I told a little bit about my experience of having a little fall at the Kansas City airport and twisting my right ankle and falling down on my left knee. And the funny, extra funny thing was, is the day, the, the night before that happened, I had um, received a kit and caboodle and two books from Eileen McCusick, Electric Body, Electric Health. And I flipped it open and what the pages that I had flipped it open to were like the right hip, the right foot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I just, I shared a little bit about that. Um, in a video from October 29th. And then it was just funny because the next day, October 30th, went to the airport, walked uh, up and down the Salt Lake airport, <laughs> like for hours and hours, had no problems and no issues. Got to the Kansas City airport, was almost <laughs> to um, my husband's in a um, truck. And um, yeah, stepped into a little hole, twisted my ankle and fell down hard on my knee. but. It, and it's been a little bit over a month now and there's new skin there and you can barely tell like what it actually was, like how gnarly it actually looked. And, um, yeah, can't even tell like that there was like, you know, like a huge chunk of skin ripped out of my knee. But, um, yeah, so it's like awesome and healing pretty well and, um, don't have any like long lasting or, uh, damage from that so it's just like yeah pretty cool but it did show me some things about where I have felt stuck in a toxic situation and um, also because of fearing the unknown and fearing the discomfort of, of the unknown and all of those things and um, I shared with my friend yeah because she had asked hey did, are you guys having fun and like, how is your, how's your trip going and all that? And I was like, yeah, it's going really awesome. Really, um, it's been a, really a good time, except for I had a little, you know, a little fall at the, at the airport and just like kind of, um, give him a sell some TLC and stuff. And I'd sent her a picture and, and she had texted me back and said, wow, what messages are you painfully receiving? And I was just like, I already knew what it was about and it's just this uh, back and forth between letting go of an old habit and an addiction that doesn't serve me anymore but I there's still some part of me that really wants to hold on for dear life to it and um, so it has to do with smoking tobacco and um, yeah I even get like a feeling of fear and anxiety, just even thinking about like not being able to lean on that as a crutch anymore because I've put so much energy into it and I've identified with being like a smoker and like for so many years. And so, yeah, I did, um, yeah, I looked at the left foot. The left foot was being stuck or mired in a toxic situation. And then I, I looked at the left knee entry earlier um, a couple days ago and then uh, just now before I started recording and it's just like wow 
And then I also read a little bit about um, the heart and the throat and those kinds of things. And yeah, these things that are coming up for me right now, like for old things that I no longer need to carry. I no longer need to put my energy into. But yeah, it is, it does feel a little scary and it feels a little overwhelming. And yeah, along with some other things that have been coming up that I've seen um, with dynamics, certain old dynamics that, yeah, dysfunctional dynamics that no longer work for me. And why certain things have been feeling so heavy and dense this week and a little bit just, yeah. There's this part of myself that feels Just so burdened like that there's this other part of myself that um, is so overbearing and so um, yeah yesterday or the day before I was feeling like super just super drained and exhausted and uh, allowed myself to rest and just like let go of some things of what I thought I had to do for that day and just reminding myself it's okay for me to be it's okay for me to just be and then to just do certain things while I'm being, <laughs> while I'm being me, showing up and being, <laughs> yeah, as I am, right where I am, and allowing me the space and the grace just to be wherever it is, however it is, and just be this love for me, meet me with love, and allow it to be like all it is and it gets to be. And so, um, yeah, I hadn't really even looked at my oracle cards or anything like that lately. I haven't done a lot of reading. Yeah, so, and it's just maybe a way for me to, like, reorder and restructure some things, like, by by letting all of the, the like, kind of routines and attachments and things go. Like, they can um, all come back together everything can fall apart right now and so it can come back together in the way that it's uh, meant to for the greatest good for the for the whole in service to the whole in service of the whole of the whole being and so I, I opened up some two boxes of oracle cards uh, one was a gift that a friend had sent me last week and I love it so much. I have never ever seen like this before and it's so amazing and super inspiring and I just love it so much for me. Thank you, Rachel. And it's the Herbal Astrology Oracle deck and that's um, Adriana Alias. Yeah, not sure. But anyways, like I received so many amazing messages from these two oracle decks of exactly what I needed and it's just kind of funny how like how fun and awesome and magical like responding to life and following those inner nudges and the intuition and and choosing self-care and self-love and presence like yeah what can unfold and what can be received through that receptivity and through that trust and that faith and uh, just letting go and being willing and so uh, yeah I did the first card that I drew from this Wisdom of Avalon deck by Colette Car Baron Reed Colette Baron Reed uh, was um, burden because <laughs> I had felt like kind of burdened like I just needed to step back and step away from everything just a little bit, just to come back home to me. And I didn't feel like I had a lot of energy or anything really to give or offer anyone. Like, yeah, a couple days ago, I just needed to go within and go and hibernate. And I kind of felt like a little bit guilty and a little bit, yeah. I don't know if it, selfish is the right word, but I just needed, yeah, time for me and just rest 
and not to take on any other responsibilities. You know, I really love to support people and I really love to give and I love to offer like all the things that I can. But sometimes when I feel like I'm, my, you know, gauge is on empty, I just, yeah, need to step back and take care of me. And so it's like, I get to notice too before, before I get to that point of, of just, yeah, running on empty to take the time to nurture and, and do the good things and that I need, to, you know, that supports my well being so that I have that overflowing cup to share with others because I can't give from an empty vessel and an empty cup. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of confusion and things coming up. And it's just kind of fun, like, to know, though, um, to kind of see the archetypes at play and see what the astrology, what's happening with the astrology and it really does help, like being forewarned <laughs> as being forearmed. Like I took that one from Adam Ellen Boss, yeah, because it is just so true. Like if we know what <laughs> we know, what kind of energies are uh, we're working with, or that are coming in, or um, maybe influencing us, then it's easier to respond um, <laughs> with that being for armed with that knowledge and that knowledge is power and it does help us like kind of make more sense of things when it's like seemingly sometimes randomly so chaotic and what the fuck is this <laughs> what the fuck is going on here but it's just like <laughs> yeah, it does help a lot like to be like somewhat aware of like some of the influences at work and so that we can make them conscious and we can respond more consciously to them or, yeah, um, heal like through the opportunity and the gift that's being given and, and make use of it <laughs> because nothing is wasted. There is a use for everything. And even if it's like just given back put on the compost heap <laughs> so making that space for new life and so burden was one of the ones uh, that I received from this card uh, deck this oracle deck and it was pretty amazing and also the goblin which is like a, a symbol of the wounded ego yeah and so I thought that was pretty great um, burden. I'll just read this entry, number 43. What burdens are you carrying on this part of this journey? What burdens are you carrying on this part of the journey? Are you transporting those of others out of gen generosity or codependency? Is this burden so heavy that it slows you down? This marker asks you to stop and look at your responsibilities, your commitments, and all that you bring with you on your journey. Are you clinging to an unhealthy relationship out of fear? Are you taking on the burden of others to prevent them from getting hurt? Do you know that this enables others to avoid learning their life lessons and doesn't really help at all? Drawing this marker encourages you to release others to their own path. It may also be a time for you to ask if you're helping because you like being needed. If the answer is yes, then the message is truly to let go of this burden, for it's born of self-centeredness. Release the burden of others to the divine. They also have their angels, their own angels and guides, just as you do. Trust in the divine plan for all. On the sacred path to Avalon, you must be aware that you pack all the essential wisdom tools you will need to chart your course. Integrity, kindness, compassion, discernment, discretion, faith, forgiveness, truth, and love are but some of them. Once your tools are counted, see if the rest of what you're hanging on to is appropriate. This is the time to leave behind any unnecessary burdens and to know you have the strength to carry what is yours. So it's perfect for so many things right now. 
be taking that to heart. Next one is 44, letting go. Releasing attachments, expectations, and desires yet unfulfilled. These are some of the aspects of this card. When you receive this marker on your path, you're required to relinquish control and allow the mystery to act as she will to weave life together as it meant it is, as it is meant to be according to the laws of the cosmos. You cannot force something to come or to remain. It is, if its true place is elsewhere, remember that what is yours can never be taken away. Allowing is the key to this marker, for what is yours will come to you. The same applies to the past. This is the time to let go of old hurts, resentments, and unresolved anger, for they're no longer welcome burdens on the path ahead. Old and outmoded ideas about life, how you see others, who you are based on who you were, these must also be left behind. Then you can move forward unencumbered, stepping into the magic of the new present that leads into the best possible future. And number 45 is love. This marker reminds you to show kindness and compassion to all whom you meet on your path, be it a baker on a street corner, a co-worker, a family member, an animal, or a plant whose leaves need pruning. This marker asks you to shift perception from yourself as a solitary person on the earth to one who's part of a living system. Love is what made you, so keep it flowing. Remember to receive love as well. Ask yourself, am I blocking love? This marker reminds you that you're as connected to all of life as it is to you and that you're responsible to be the steward of the love of the god and the goddess. Love is without conditions. It is respectful, mindful, sees all life is sacred, and acts in accordance. Love reminds you that this very planet is a living being. Love is the very essence of the divine in you, and it sees the divine in others. This is the time to see through the eyes of love and always ask before you act, what would love do? The answer will always bring you extraordinary power. This marker is a very fortunate and transformative omen. And so those are just a few. And Goblin, I'll, I'll share Goblin, the Goblin, the Wounded Human Ego. I'm missing my tissues. <laughs> when the Goblin appears on your path, your plans are or about to go awry. The Goblin wants to lead you astray and whispers the negative spell of fear, anger, resentment, self-righteousness, arrogance, selfishness, greed, gluttony, procrastination, and addiction. When the Goblin appears, it's time to stop what you're doing and check your motives. Are you coming from an ego-centered place? Are the circumstances in your life triggering unresolved past issues that still need healing? Now is the time for self-evaluation and taking inventory before you take another step. The goblin represents the wounded ego and its influence. Dark, repressed areas of the psyche get triggered, either in you or warning you about a dynamic between you and someone else. Do nothing, stay still, send loving energies to yourself and others, and remember the divine connection in all things. The goblin will disappear and lose power when you focus on love and fairness. So yeah, I thought that was interesting that that came up and... I'm still seeing into that, and there's a, a definite uh, dysfunctional dynamics that I've seen come up, um, and things that I've chosen to play into uh, um, around like codependency issues and those kinds of things. And so I'm, I'm learning like so much more and seeing so much more into some of my old patternings. And, um, yeah, inherited patterns and then learned, learned patterns. And so, um, I had watched this video last week or, yeah, it was a week or two ago that Teal Swan had shared and it was about honesty. And that was, you know, some of the things that I've been working with around truth and trust and like, can we get more honest with ourselves? Can we be more real with ourselves? Where can we be more real? Where can I be more real with myself? And uh, I'll put this link in the description box. I get to watch it again too, because it, I got so much from it. Like um, when I first watched it, 
and I feel like it's time to refresh and review it and go back to it because there was one that I saw last night by Teal and it was uh, this mind trick, something about this mind trick of codependency and this concept called confluence. And I just face palmed myself and I was like, oh my God, that's what I've been doing. Like to, to feel safe and secure is to, um, and it's like, it has to do with enmeshment trauma and all of those things. And so I get to like, just kind of like allow things to be revealed to me and just witness and observe and do my best like to be true to me. And yeah, there's a lot of things that are coming up around that. And um, I will share a little bit more um, in my next video. But I just wanted to come on and, and share some of those things to kind of uh, set the stage for, um, yeah, the next time when I know like all of this is ready to be uh, seen in the light. <laughs> In the light of through the light of illumination and so I just wanted to share uh, a couple of entries from the herbal astrology oracle and it was just so amazing I love working with the plants and they're such like the best teachers and I love I love our earth our mother earth and all of the elements of creation and just like the magic and the beauty that really is all around just waiting for our reception and our notice if we can be present and to receive like all the beauty that's always here within and around us. So, um, yeah, a couple of the amazing plant teachers, yeah, some of them that I drew the first one was Tulsi, and that's Wealth and Arnica 33 Teacher. And, and that's amazing because I work with those a lot in my own like uh, healing routines and whatnot. I, I drink holy basil or Tulsi every day, and I make my kombucha with it, and I have like this amazing tincture that I make. And um, my friend Rachel, who actually sent me this oracle deck, yeah, I had sent her some holy basil a couple months ago and she had said that, oh, that was the best holy basil I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> it's just like, I'm so glad you enjoy it and you love it and everything. And, and it's, and it's awesome. Like for me, just because like, I've, yeah, there is just, I was something I was drawn to, like to, to play with the plants and to learn and to grow and to, yeah, just remember certain things that the plants can help me and and we like remember like our connection to life and to all the elements and to this beautiful earth and like all the things uh, all the growing things I've just always you know really felt such love and gratitude for all the things, all the green things, and, and the process of greening and growing. And um, I have, yeah, some awesome news that my website for my Three Fates Magic Tea, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's up and it's running, but it's just the basics. It's just like the, the bones of it, like really, and I just get to build and sing and like I feel like all of the everything like singing singing to the bones <laughs> you know the flesh and the fur and the form will all fill out like <laughs> and it, it'll unfold organically like just by showing up for it and that's what I'm excited about is to start adding like uh, informational content and like start personally like blogging about like why I love certain plants or yeah all these things and that's why I like this oracle deck is like just so amazing because it ties so many things together and I love that it's like part of the divine feminine wisdom and the the, the arts of feminine healing that I am so like all about <laughs> you know and so Tulsi and Arnica and uh Bobbin let's see 
Bob and Sana, which I hadn't really heard a lot about, but I have heard about Cat's Claw, so uh, got a little more like learning to do here. And so, yeah, I want to read um, Arnica, teacher. Arnica Montana, Arnica Cardifolia. Upright is loyalty, commitment, perseverance, teacher, stability, companionship, community, unique path. Also known as the mountain daisy, wolf's bane, leopard's bane, and mountain tobacco, Arnica grows abundantly in alpine meadows in Europe and North America. Several Native American tribes, including the uh, Tulsa use the roots of arnica or the heart leaf arnica to prepare a pain relieving tea. European remedies date back to the 16th century when arnica was used to treat black eyes, sprains, and contusions. Arnica preparations have been extensively found in Russian folk medicine where it was used as an external treatment for wounds, black eyes, sprains, contusions, uterine hem hemorrhages, heart and artery issues, and numerous other applications. Partly because ingestion is shown to cause severe liver damage and internal bleeding, topical applications have proven to be most effective in assisting in tissue regeneration. Arnica stimulates a great amount of blood flow, allowing it to rapidly relieve pain and swelling and aid in healing bruises and hematomas. The first written record of Arnica appears in the Middle Ages, where it was referred to as Elisma. Back then, it was used for many of the same reasons that we use it today. Old tales describe how Arnica was planted at the corners of fields during the summer solstice to protect from evil field spirits. Direct contact with these spirits was associated with sickness and bad luck. Other folk tales describe the use of arnica on and around the solstice when it bloomed and using the plants to trap corn wolf, rye wolf, and grain wolf spirits, preventing them from leaving until the grain was ready for harvest. Arnica's extraordinary pain relieving, wound and bone healing properties fall under Saturn's rulership. Energetically, arnica embodies Saturn by supporting our energy to heal and mend after trauma. Guidance. Arnica has long been associated with wolf medicine, symbolizing loyalty, leadership, community, intuition, and instinctual intelligence. Wolf, like Arnica, teaches us how to become resilient teachers so that we experience greater knowing and help others as they seek their own path. When Arnica grows in the wild, it is found in unique and mystical patches, showing us its unique form of manifestation and growth. Like Wolf, it does not follow established pathways. It finds its own way off the beaten path, defying patterns of habit. Draw upon the power of your tribe to discover the power of co-creative support. Holding your unique power within a community further empowers your vision and capacity. Like a wolf, be fiercely loyal to your tribe while also upholding your unique talent. So that's amazing. Another card that I got, but I'm not going to share it, um, this thought was like amazing, it was um, Mitragina or Mitragenia, which is also known as Kratom. And so I've been familiar with that plant as well. And that is all about shape shifting. And so that was amazing, really. But what I really, yeah, horsetail was patience. And that was one of the ones. And, um, Bobbin, let's see, Bobbin Sauna is about trust. And so I definitely want to share that one because trust is a huge thing right now and repairing like the trust that has been broken and the trust that we have in ourselves and all of that. And so um, Bobbin, let's see, where are you? Here we go. Herbs of the Moon. Page 31. Herbs of the Moon. Bob and Sana. Upright, self-love, heart retrieval, ultimate state of receivership, gratitude, receptivity, and compassion. In the Shipibo tradition, 
Bhavan Sana is a highly respected master teacher that contains a plethora of medicinal benefits for the body, mind, and spirit. Native to the Amazon basin, many call the herb Serentia or mermaid. Beautiful paintings found in the Amazon among shamans depict her as a goddess, a deeply creative feminine spirit who has masterful healing abilities. Uh, Serenita de los Rios assists us in the healing wounds of the heart, of healing wounds of the heart, past relationships, grief, loss, sadness, abuse, and melancholy. Babansana is often prescribed by a carandero or healer to heal wounds from childhood for soul retrieval or to heal a stunted soul, susto, that left fragments of itself in a painful past. Whether used as a single plant during a specific shamanic cleanse, like a dieta, for purification and spiritual awakening, or brewed as a tea, Babansana assists in deeply amplifying heart energy to experience the transcendent power of love, empathy, compassion, oneness, and freedom from pain. Babansana also grants the powers of expans expansive intuition and lucid dreaming. Many users, when ingesting babansana through dietas or alongside other ceremonial brews, experience time differently, as if the barriers between waking life and dreaming get washed away. It is said that these transcendent experiences of love beyond space and time are what allows for miraculous heart healing. Guidance, Babansana's bright and pink flowers bathe the energy body with the softness of light, awakening the inner pathways to unconditional self-love. Babansana reminds us that love is the highest state of receivership, reminding us not to forget the necess reminding us not to forget the necessary power of self-love. Yeah, it is a necessity. Babansana assists us in rediscovering forgotten places within ourselves, retrieving fragments of our heart, seeking healing. Ask yourself, where in my heart's memory can I bring wholeness to? Babansana medicine is like that of whales and hummingbirds and joyous record keepers of the sacred that assist us in accessing the reservoirs of the cosmic heart. Serenita is reminding you to pay close attention to the messages encoded in dreams, synchronicities, and symbols that surround you right now. Through those doorways, you can further explore the great mystery of your heart's desire. And just wow. Wow, it's great. Wow. And so I have been inspired to work with Bob and Sana and be giving some of that out for winter solstice this year because it seems like that is what is needed right now. A lot of healing of the heart and yeah, soul retrieval and letting go of the past. So I had just turned this little page here and the next entry is chamomile, inner peace. And chamomile is such a great plant too, it's such a beautiful flower. It's, so it smells, the smells and the taste is just divine. It's almost like candy to me, it's just amazing. So I'll just share a little bit. Inner peace. Restoration, softness, purity, graceful power, inner peace, delight, and harmony. The word chamomile is derived from the Greek uh, camelia, meaning ground apple. In Spain, it has been called manzanilla, or little apple, for hundreds of years, a reference to the plant's refreshing, crisp, apple-like aroma. Chamomile flowers are traditionally used in teas, tinctures, and formulas to treat anxiety, insomnia, depression, digestive upset, and as an antiseptic and more. Chamomile was regarded as sacred in ancient Egypt and commonly burned as incense as an offering to the sun god Ra. Ancient Romans and Greeks valued chamomile for its medicinal properties and used it as a healing beverage and to soothe skin conditions. During the Middle Ages, European doctors frequently prescribed chamomile syrups and ointments to treat various ailments, and it was used as a bittering agent in beer. Vikings re regarded chamomile as one of the nine sacred herbs and used it to soothe digestion and as a rinse for their hair to give their braids strength and shine. Although chamomile embodies the shining sun, its medicinal qualities are also aligned to the archetype of the moon. The moon rules the gastrointestinal system, emotional body, and nervous system. On a soul level, chamomile flowers assist us in releasing stored emotional tension from our stomach, nervous system, and solar plexus. Chamomile deeply nurtures our emotional landscape, able to soothe emotional distress and psychic stressors. Guidance. 
If you find yourself often triggered and consumed by small stresses, be aware that they accumulate, creating a chronic state of disharmony and fear. Chamomile today is reminding you to not project your fears onto life and others. Allow yourself a state of internal peace and give yourself the greatest love imagined. Chamomile-like deer energy instills a contained center of innocence, warmth, and light within us. Deer blesses us with the power of gentleness to heal our wounds and the heart-mind of wounded beings. Don't push hard to do the work. It's the gentleness of the spirit that heals all. Wow. Dear blesses us with the power of gentleness to heal our wounds and the heart mind of wounded beings. Don't push hard to do the work. It's the gentleness of spirit that heals all. So wow, that does that does really resonate um, with some other messages that I received this week. It's like we're not really the ones that are um, doing doing the transformation. We're allowing the transformation to uh, to happen through us, and so we're sur- you know we're the ones that are surrendering, letting go of the resistance, letting go of the attachments, so that grace can work through us, and so that miracles can, yeah, be re- be realized and. work through us yeah that is amazing so yeah there's so many thoughts that I have now but really does <laughs> really yeah these messages were amazing really for all the things that have been coming up for me this week and like uh, the feelings of anxiety and the friction and like certain fears and resentments and tension and just like frustrations, irritations, and annoyances that I have felt that I really kind of have an aversion to. Um, Because, yeah, I kind of just sometimes won't allow myself to feel those things because I don't like to feel them. And I feel like, oh, it's wrong for me to feel that way. And so that's an old story. And I can just say, oh, thank you. like, Thanks for this, you know, gift that you're helping me to see that I have like this within me that I can choose for me. And um, that I can allow all of me to be, and I can allow this to move through me. And I can allow myself, like, to, to be free. To be free from those attachments. And from that pain I've been holding on to. And so, yeah, this friction and tension, letting go of resistance to surrendering and being, receiving, allowing, and freeing what is already right here. Man, friction and tension sparks. <laughs> and then, yeah, there's some sparks coming up, like this electrical <laughs> electricity in the air. And um, so it's this hey, sparky, hey, sparkly, hey, sparkly, shining soul, hey, sparkly, shining, gorgeous love of being right here. <laughs> yeah, as you are, this beautiful soul showing up and being yourself just as you are right here. And uh, victory to the prana in its evolutionary course, strengthening the will through the throat center. Om Hum Hanumate Vijayam. Liberate yourself from mental slavery. Yeah. And this pain you no longer need to carry. So I've been thinking about honesty, impeccability, and truthfulness, transparency, and authenticity. And reviewing Till Swan's videos about honesty that I saw last week. And man... Yeah, some of the things that I said in my own videos and my desires for us to get more real with ourselves and each other, even though it might be uncomfortable or the result may be undesirable or judged as undesirable. But obviously, like, sometimes, like, when uh, change comes, it doesn't feel very desirable. But after, like, (laughs) after we allow it and after, like, you know, like just allowing the process of it and it takes us through to the whole other side of it. And then it's like one of the best things that could have ever happened. Um, and sometimes like certain blessings, they, they feel like curses. <laughs> and sometimes certain curses actually end up being blessings. And so it's kind of funny that it isn't either or, and it isn't, you know, one or the other. Uh, they both hold each other. And it's all about how we can harmonize and and uh, 
integrate it within ourselves and allow it like yeah allow it to work through us so just like letting go of a lot of judgments and a lot of old beliefs and strategies and mechanisms that don't serve me and don't serve the whole and don't serve the integrity of my relationships and the relationships with myself and so just wanted to share a couple of those things and I'll put um, a couple few links for anybody who wants to check out yeah the things I've been looking into this week so thanks for listening I love you I hope you're being loved for yourself and you're feeling as well as you can and making that room and that space for the well yeah for that whole well for that well-being within us to be full true and well yeah so bless your heart and bless yourself love y'all see you for now